Hello everybody, it's The Last Raider. We are back with another video. And today, we're going to be looking at the desperation of the establishment, of Wall Street, of the media, and really how their constant lying is now starting to catch up to them. They've reached a desperate point. Okay, you got to remember, hedge funds have had this nice little relationship with Walt, with uh, the media. They come out and they stir up a bunch of controversy on the media's platform. They'll come. You'll have some Wall Street professional, some Wall Street bean counter come out there, and he'll say this particular group, uh, this particular stock is now set to fall. It's going to fall and fall like a rock. Y'all people need to sell and get out while your money's still good. And they'll put him up on CNN, and he'll put this fantastic lie out there. And then while Every, when everyone decides to get ready to start selling, turns out, lo and behold, this guy and a bunch of his Wall Street cronies have gone out there and shorts and shorted all the stock on that particular, uh, or shorted the, the stock, basically. So what happens? Uh, people freak out. They cause a panic sale. And as people are panic selling, they're making a whole bunch of money off the panic selling, regardless of if it destroys the job. Okay, we're talking, sometimes they'll take... Um, businesses done by mom and pops and uh, Mitt Romney who's a rhino he is a big he's a this how he made his money was being what they call a corporate raider they go in they short the company till it's worth almost nothing they take the money they shorted from the company turn back around buy majority stocks until they become owner of the company then they cut the company up into pieces and divvy it out it's like it's like a, uh, a bunch of hunters going out there, killing a deer, and then cutting off parts of it and handing it off to each person that helped out. You know, each person, they take it and they sell off the meat and everything, and the company's not worth anything anymore. Instead of having a cow that produces milk, these idiots come along, kill, butcher the cow, and sell the meat for a quick buck. Instead of, you know, taking the milk from the cow and, and marketing it properly and building a business. They basically steal it from a guy who's took care of the cow, grown the cow and everything else, and then they up and butcher it and sell the cow off. Then the guy who, who raised the cow probably wanted to make some money off of it, probably make more cows if he could, produce more milk and go out and you know do his thing. Well, since Wall Street Bets has come onto the onto the field, they basically took their shorts took the Wall Street short selling nonsense and Took them for a ride. And a ride, what a ride it is, folks. It's awesome been watching this nonsense. Uh, and coming to someone who had corporate money putting their boot in the neck of my family, like directly. I'm not talking like most people say. They're like, oh, I couldn't find a job or anything. I'm talking my dad would go out to go find a job because he fought for union workers' rights for higher pay and better working conditions in the in the modular home plant that he was working at back in the eighties on no, yeah, back in the eighties. And he got fired from when they finally figured out he was part of the guy, part of three guys that were causing the union in a last bit desperate plea to shut, to try and shut him up. They went in there, they fired my dad, fired the other three guys that were starting the union. Then all their wives, like my mom, she worked over at a license bureau. They fired her within an hour of firing my dad. The other two guys, they had wives working in two different other plate, two other companies in town. They were both fired from their jobs, and the excuse was, uh, "I'm sorry, I have to fire you right now because the guys that were in charge of the company were also on the city council board and approved things and could make your life miserable." So when I see these Wall Street bigwigs coming up there getting their asses handed to them, I don't have a problem with it. I've had to suffer under you idiots for most of my childhood was sitting over there living poor uh, being able to see through the floors of my house and having wind blow clean through it because we couldn't afford anything better our life actually started when i got to about seven or eight years old because those idiots died off of old age and it was finally and when they were gone opportunity finally come back they literally stifled our opportunity and we couldn't get a lawyer or nothing to fight anything with because they pretty much could run the law. They pretty much were running lawyers. They were pretty much telling judges what to do. They pretty much run things because they had money and power. Well, today the people have now decided to fight back, and I cheer them on. Wall Street bets. I may not have the money to participate in your little deal, but understand, I approve of everything you have done. All right, I have no problem with it. Y'all should do more of it. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. 
Okay, we're here to talk about the new mer- the new narrative that's coming in, the desperation of Wall Street right now because they've gotten their media cronies, and they're now doing the only thing they know how to do: lie. <clears throat> And they're lying and have been lying. Let me tell you something. Those of you who don't like Trump, I'm going to tell you all something right now. I didn't like everything about Trump. Okay? When he first got in, I thought, Dad Gummit, the guy that, that's doing Playboy, is going to be President of the United States. I was happy with him because he wasn't Hillary. But he made jobs. He helped people. And I came to the conclusion afterward that maybe all that wild living was a young man who had not learned much about life yet. I'm not going to get on the Trump train right now, but I'm going to say, do you remember the media narratives of Russia, 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 every time they talked about Trump? Well, now that Trump's gone and Wall Street bets has come along and become a bigger threat now to the mainstream than Trump has because that when they when Wall Street bets threatens the hedge funds, you got to remember these hedge funds also invest in your media. They also invest in politicians. They will give money to a politician and try to do the golden handcuffs thing. We've talked about this with Joe Rogan. What is happening now? They can't control Wall Street bets. So if the media can't control you, and they have tried to do this, they tried to control it with Dogecoin. Tried to get people, maybe if we direct them to Dogecoin, we can raise the price on Dogecoin and then we can, well, what they think they were trying to do was redirect Redditors and Wall Street bets and everyone that's betting with them and see if they could direct them to different markets, causing them to jump up and then they could buy them at top price and short sell at a top price, then redirect them to something else. They tried to do this with Dogecoin and they've tried to do it by redirecting them to silver. You go to the Reddit page, They'll tell you, we're not buying silver. That's a fake. Hold the line, diamond hands. I agree with y'all. But now that now they, they've realized they can't control these people. They can't direct them. They can't manipulate them. So what do they do? They're going to try and destroy them. How? Enter Jimmy Kimmel, a media shill, um, a man that has lowered the standards of comedy to such a degree that complaining and crying is now supposed to be funny. I don't ever watch the man. I just found this nonsense on Twitter and thought it was hilarious. But I want you to hear the narrative that he uses because the same thing they've been saying about Trump, and I want people to stop and realize something. When it comes down to these weirdos on the internet who are pushing cancel culture, they lie. They lie, and they lie, and they lie. We saw the first couple of lies back when they would say, when some woman would be cut, would be in the starring role of a movie, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. We've never had a, the first female action hero. So, uh, forgetting about Sikora V. Weaver in uh, Alien. Forgetting uh, Julia Roberts. And, was it Julia Roberts? I don't know if Julia Roberts was in. Yeah, Julia Roberts was an action woman. She was in, what was that movie, Conspiracy Theory? She was she was like an, a reluctant hero. She was technically the hero of it. She was the heroine, and she did. She actually aided. She actually uh, rescued. Uh, what was it? Mel Gibson and whatnot. She actually comes back and saves his butt afterwards. Just she ends up being pretty badass. They they forgot all about these chicks for some reason, but they lie. That's the thing. SJWs, the left, weirdos, all of them. They lie about every single thing. Well, here's Jimmy Kimball starting the Russia lie. This is true. Most people do buy games online. But there are groups of people that don't have good internet connection out in the country areas. They do buy physical games. We've seen this with The Last of Us Part Two, where they would where you would go in, you see stacks and stacks and stacks of physical copies, but then you look over and Ghost of Tsushima would be completely sold out. And I'm saying that because one dude is, has decided to fuck with me in the comments, man. <laughs> I'm just doing this just to irritate him. He shall not be named. He's not really worth my time. I'm just here to irritate him for the moment. But yeah, people do buy games online. Most of the thing from GameStop struggles 
has been because, in my opinion, poor marketing used to. They would, and it was also the, the big problem I think they had was they kept having games returned. Even pawn shop owners stopped doing that crap after a while of taking games in because they thought, oh, you know, games love resale value. And pawn shop owners quickly figured out, they and they said the same thing. They said, you know, not all games are bestsellers. And there's a lot of lemons out there. And they said, if we don't know how to properly price it, we won't take it anymore. They actually, A lot of pawn shops have stopped taking games entirely because video games are, because reselling video games is not a good market. Uh, GameStop, in my opinion, they need to probably go to some other sort, some other form of system. They need to reinvent themselves. Uh, Tim Pool said they ought to reinvent themselves as a gaming store, you know, or as like a gaming arena. Uh, have people come in, you know, have video games on standby, the latest games you can try out. <clears throat> That's the thing I tell people a lot of times has has really needs to be fixed is the idea of demoing. Okay, you need to demo games. Have GameStop get the first edition of your game probably before it's released and let people play it a little bit before they buy it. You know, let people try stuff before they buy it. Just load up a load up a PlayStation in there or something. Load it up with the hot new games that have come out and just let people try them out. If they like them, they like them. If they don't, they don't. Just, you know, let them go. Uh, do card games and stuff like that. But here we go. Media narrative coming in. Three, two, one. Despite a sharp decline in sales, over the past six months, their stock price has grown by 8,000% because a bunch of amateur investors, maybe even some Russian disruptors who are... Russian disruptors. Wall Street bets is not the common people, everyone. This is not the common man because the common man would not hurt our precious hedge funds. These are Russians. These are Russian disruptors. This is the narrative that's now coming down the line. They are going to try and push, and I promise you this is what's going to happen. Because I did this with Trump multiple times. And they should tell you something about all the crap that was said about Trump. Almost all of it you can guarantee with some kind of lie. You go to Wall Street Bets, you go to their forum, they're just 4chan-minded people with with stock market accounts. That's it. I've gone to the Reddit, I've checked them out, and I'm like, I've been here and I've been to 4chan. It's about the same mentality, okay? Same type of people. Average people with different types of skills that realize they ha- that realize they can take their weaponized autism and do something with it. Well, this time they went up against the stock market and showed them, you know. I mean, it's, it's kind of the analogy. You see a big giant bug, and it may be tough, like a big beetle or something, and it may be real tough. But as soon as he runs into a colony of ants, they climb all over him. Now, each one of them ants individually cannot bite very hard, and they can't do a whole lot of damage before that bug kills them. But collectively, they can kill that bug with a thousand bites. They'll eventually take it down. And that's what Wall Street Bets is. It, it, they are the army ants. They're the army ants that when they unleash themselves, they strip everything down. They may not be strong individually. They may only be able to individually buy $300 worth of game stonks. But when you start adding those people together, when they unite, they're a force to be reckoned with. And despite all the money Wall Street has, it's not enough. They don't have enough money in the world, apparently, to fight a collective force of people that are going to fight. And this is not this is not a right thing or a left thing, okay? There are left-wing people that are loving this. There are working-class people that love this. The Pipe Fitters Association, I guarantee, are really loving it after Keystone got knocked down. I mean, they're probably really enjoying this nonsense. Some of them probably taking their union retirement and union money and saying, we would like to invest in your game stonks. This seems like a good cause. Like I said, man, I can't buy it for less than 100 bucks right now, or I'd have already bought some. So the next time, I'm going to be watching, because the next short sale, uh, next time y'all fight the short sale over at, um, over at, I uh, forgot the name, Wall Street Bets, I'm going to be getting me some diamond hands to get that as well. By the way, folks, tell me what you think about this, about you know the new media narrative. And do you trust them anymore? Does it make you question some of the things they've said about Donald Trump and, well, the other half of America, basically? The half of America that doesn't want to spend all our money and send it overseas and would rather have it sent here to everybody else? Tell me what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, 
subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty, and don't watch Jimmy Kimmel, folks. Uh, he's a lying scumbag. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.